Hey everybody, thanks for joining us here at T-Roy Cooks. I really appreciate it. I was going to show you how to do some modifications to your Weber Smoky Mountain today. I've got the 22 and a half inch version and I've got a brand new stainless steel door that I'm going to show you how to install. It is very, very simple. In fact, all of these mods are really just super simple, folks. Really quick. You can probably do them in 10 minutes, if that. Um, anyway, new stainless steel door. I've had a lot of questions about how I installed my River Country thermometer on the dome section of my Weber Smoky Mountain. So I'm going to show you how I did that. Also, I've got a modification I did down in the charcoal grate area to help my charcoal briquettes last longer. So I'm going to show that to you as well. And I've had a few other questions about different things that people have seen in my videos. When I, you know, in my, in my background, you'll see my pool and other stuff. So I'll show you some stuff that uh, I've had questions about on other videos about my yard. It's gonna be a great video. Let's get to work on that Weber Smoky Mountain, folks. This is my Weber Smoky Mountain as she sits right now. Again, 22 and a half inch version. I've got a five inch River Country thermometer on here and also have just the regular aluminum door that came with the Weber Smoky Mountain. I'm gonna take the midsection and dome off and show you that the uh, charcoal grate down there. And this has been sitting in the sun, so it's hot. You know, you don't wanna burn your hands, folks. And when you're sitting this off, try to sit it on something that's soft. You know, if you, if you can, use something soft to sit your parts for, you know, your, your dome, your midsection, all that. Sit it on something soft so that you don't damage the enamel. And if you do that, it could prematurely rust. Now, sometimes I don't have anything to sit it on. Sometimes you see me sitting on my concrete deck here, but if I have the opportunity, I'll sit it on something soft like I just did. Let me show you what we got down here, folks. Whoop, sorry about that. I kicked the truck pod leg. All right, take out the uh, little ring catcher thing there. And this is what I done. This is a modification I did to my charcoal grates. This is the original one right here from Weber. From, uh, Weber. If you look at here, you'll see a little smaller. I think this is a 14 inch one that I just turned 90 degrees, put on there, and then around here I've got little places where, I, where I've uh, got some copper wire and just kind of twisted it up around there to, to hold this all together. I mean, it still moves just a little bit, but not much. And the idea with this is, with just the basic grill grate, when the charcoal starts getting kind of small, it'll fall through the, the original one. Whereas if you're doubling it by crisscrossing this crisscross pattern here, it'll help retain some of the charcoal before uh, before it goes down into the ashes and dies out. So you get more use out of your fuel that way. All right, let me bring you over and uh, we'll show you how, we'll show you how I did the uh, thermometer next. Stick around. So I put my dome under the, uh, under my patio on a chair so we can easily see it. It's kind of hard when you've got the contrast of the really bright sun. Let me show you what we've got here. And you can see I've got uh, my thermometer here. There's the vent. And all I really need to do is a little nut in here, which I'm going to hold with my left hand while I turn the, the dial section here. And just as easy as that, it comes loose. It just has to be hand tight, folks. That's all you need. You undo this nut right here. All right, there's the nut. When you take this off, it's got a washer on it. It's just got a little washer here. And then I've got the actual thermometer itself. And again, this is a five inch uh, River Country thermometer. It goes from 50 to 550. And if you look over here on the back, it's got a little bitty flathead uh, screw right there. That's for an adjustment. Now, what I did, I wanted my actual thermometer here to read my grill grate, my top grate temp. So what I've did, I, I've got a, a wireless Maverick ET33 thermometer. <clears throat> I set that on the grill grate, the top one. I got my Weber Smoky Mountain up to 225 and once it was maintained 225 for you know 15 20 minutes it's good to go but I wanted to dial this thermometer in so that this reads my grill grate instead of the actual dome temperature which is usually higher so I went ahead and, and installed the thermometer here, got my Maverick, my ET33 sitting inside the, the Weber on the top grate, and 
I waited to see what this thing read. Now I know my ET33 is very accurate. Once it got to 225, I then took this out, you know, and, and I marked, didn't mark, but I, I remembered where it was reading before. And on this dial here, this little, uh, this little screw, I believe if you need it to, be, to read lower, you turn it counterclockwise and higher clockwise, I believe. Could be wrong about that. And from what I remember, it doesn't take much of a turn to adjust the dial. So I just dialed this, this baby in. I turned it a little bit counterclockwise, I believe. And I might have to do it like maybe two or three times to get it right. <clears throat> but you adjust it, you stick it back in, see if it reads the same as the ET33 or whatever temp you want. And um, once you get it dialed in, you're good to go. You don't have to touch this adjustment screw on the back anymore. And hopefully y'all can see this. But uh, once it's dialed in, stick it in there. And, um, and I'll show you how, to, how I actually cut the hole out in a second. But you stick the thermometer in there, tighten it down. And then you can use the second probe from the ET33 as a second meat probe. You don't have to use it as a grate probe anymore because your thermometer on the dome is reading your grate level for you. Pretty slick, isn't it? Let me show you how we drill out this hole in the Web of Smoky Mountain. All right, and again, hopefully y'all can see this. This is the hole right here. If you look closely, there's a little bitty hole here right above the little hole that comes with the Weber. Uh, don't worry about this little hole. If you need to, put you a big washer there, but I, I didn't find that hardly any, if any, smoke leaks out of here, so I'm not worried about it. I believe the original hole in the lid from Weber comes with uh, either quarter inch or half inch. I, I cannot remember. But let me show you what I did to drill this baby out. Get your power drill or some kind of uh, you know rechargeable type drill. And you need a unibit. I've got my unibit in here already. And this is the unibit. And I just picked this up at my local hardware store. And if you look, um, I'm, I'm pretty sure that this diameter here I needed was uh, 13 sixteenths. I believe, I believe it's what this is. But you get some instructions uh, that come with the thermometer to tell you how big of a hole it needs. Now, I don't know if you can see in here, but if you look in the black, the dark area here, it actually has incremental reading. Like down here, it starts, you know, I don't know, maybe a quarter inch or something. And it gradually tapers up as this gets bigger and bigger all the way to one inch at this widest portion here. And the 13 sixteenths, reading this gauge here, it's like a half inch, one inch, quarter inch, you know, it's, it's all in there. But if you look at these different uh, stainless steel cutters here, 13 sixteenths is the second to last one. So I don't need to go to this last one. I just need to go to the second to last one. You can mark this off with some masking tape or something so that when the masking tape, you know, when you're drilling through and your masking tape reaches the dome level, the metal on the Weber, you know you've gone far enough. You don't need to go all the way to one inch. You'll make a, two, a hole too big and it'll make it wobbly in there. Um, and I used a unibit because, let me get you up here where I can see you. I used a unibit because a regular metal bit doesn't work. Well, it will, but it doesn't work well if you've already got a hole in metal. That's where the unibit comes in. It's designed so that you can put it in a hole that's already in metal and as the drill turns, these cutting edges cut little bits of metal and it's tapered so that the hole keeps getting larger and larger the deeper you go into the hole. This is a lifesaver right here. And you get a nice, clean hole in your metal. It's a unibit, folks. Check it out. They make them different sizes. I just needed a one inch, something that would go from the smaller size that Weber put in the lid up to a one inch, which uh, 13 sixteenths is within that range so one inch bit did it for me it'll probably do it for you too but again when you get the thermometer check the little sheet of paper see what the hole diameter needs to be and get you a unibit that will drill that size hole stick your thermometer back in there and again don't forget your washer put that washer on there don't worry about this hole up here on top this little bitty slit that don't that don't work don't let that worry you okay and then stick your nut back on there oh let me tell you something else real quick here too Leave that washer on there. If you notice, I got like the three inch probe here. I did that because the 22 inch Weber Smoky Mountain has a large area in the dome. If you've got the smaller 18 and a half inch or 14 and a half inch, you might want to go with a one and a half, two inch probe. That way, if you're cooking any kind of bird, uh, poultry, like a duck or a turkey or 
a large chicken. If you have this long probe sticking down from the inside of the dome, you, you may not be able to put, put that dome on without it, the probe hitting your, your poultry. So this works fine for me, but if you got a smaller rubber smoky mount, you want to get a smaller probe. Still works the same. Check it out. Plenty of options out there, folks. All right, so we're just going to put this on. And again, the washer's on here. Go ahead and stick that on there. Put my nut on there. kind of want to hand tighten it at first and you want this dial to be straight up and down or close to it as you can get so what you need to do I don't know if I can show this for you what you need to do is reach in here grab that nut and while this is turned a little bit counterclockwise hold the nut and then turn this clockwise to tighten it and again it just has to be hand tight so that's what we've got pretty nifty isn't it all right Let's work on that stainless steel door. All right, as you can see, this is my old door, the original one that came with the Rep Smoky Mountain. This is a new stainless steel door. Now, this stainless steel door, it will come with a film on the top of it, because as you can see, as I've been touching it, it, it kind of, you can get oil on it, but you can just take some, uh, something and clean the stainless, the stainless steel cleaner and clean that up. And this other side isn't polished, so you don't really need to worry about that. It's gonna get all kind of soot and stuff on the inside anyway so this is the pretty side this is where you get your bling from on your rubber smoky mount for tools get you a wrench or get you a socket and uh it's a socket 5 16 inch socket and a ratchet that's what i use make sure you're going the right way here all right and you got the the uh the handle here you need to take this handle and locking mechanism off here we just got it's just got one screw here it shouldn't be it shouldn't be too awful tight and make note of the position here as you can see this locking piece here this piece that turns on the inside of the door it's straight up and down when this handle is is straight up and down and in fact the handles pointing down and this thing's pointing up I'll take it off here and show you in just a second and there is a uh, lock washer and another little washer on here I believe all right, and on this thing, there's a, I'll show you in a second. Okay. So again, you got the, the uh, metal screw, you got a regular washer, and then you've got like a lock, a lock washer on there also. And then this is the piece uh, that goes on the inside. And what you want to make sure is that when you put this back on, that these little curved edges, they flare towards the inside edge of your Weber Smoky Mountain towards the charcoal, you know, in, in towards the middle of the Weber Smoky Mountain. If you notice, it's got a little square. It's not round right there, and that, that's where you get that locking part right there. Now on the handle itself, you've got this little spring-loaded washer and a regular plain washer here. And if you look, you've got that square right there, and that's what meshes with this other piece and gives you that locking feature. All right, so the washer goes on first, then the little curved washer there. All right, so the lock washer's on there, put the other washer on there, and then you got this. Get that ready to go. In fact, I got it turned the wrong way. There we go. Okay, so if you want to think about it, these little pointy things, they point towards the head of the screw. How about that? Does that work for you? And again, put this on there with both washers, stick it through the hole. Kind of loosely get that screw going there. Once you get the screw going, then everything will bolt up together. You kind of get it, get it fairly tight. And then once it gets pretty tight, then you can, you can wiggle your, uh, the inside and the handle. Make sure the square lines up because that again is how it locks in place. Make sure, you know, rotate the handle, rotate this piece here, make sure everything is tight and that square it up. You can get your ratchet, turn it the right way, give it just a little, maybe a third of a turn. You don't need to over tighten it and strip it out. So when you turn this now, this is turning. Really simple. 
let me show you it installed on the Weber Smoky Mountain. All right, again, I apologize about the lighting. The sun is right that way, and it's 100 degrees and clear sky today here in Central Texas, so bear with me. This original door, and if you notice, the original door has these little tabs down here. I'll show you what that's for if you don't know. The one thing it helps lock that in there. When you open this door, it stays like that. I mean, you can put pressure here and it'll, it will come out, but that's how they designed it. Let me show you the new door. If you look on this stainless steel door, it does not have those little tabs, which I like because I can take this, just pop it in there, turn your handle so it'll lock, lock it in place. Here's your new door and it, it fits great. Um, if I need to, you can like squeeze it a little bit around the side. You'll take it off and bend it just a little bit to try to get a little bit better fit, but it works great. And when I want to add charcoal or something, it will kind of stick there, but I promise you it will eventually kind of wear down a little bit. I like the way that it comes out though, because I can freely add charcoal, charcoal, water, or check my meat right here with a probe. And I don't have to worry about this other area here hitting my arm and burning me or anything. So I like that this one just comes off. And again, remember when you get the stainless steel door from Cajun Bandit, it does not come with a handle. I'll tell you a little story about that. Let me bring you up here, folks. I actually had a stainless steel door. I bought it shortly after I got my Weber Smoky Mountain several years ago, probably about four years or so ago. So on my, some of my older videos on the Weber Smoky Mountain cooking, you will actually see a stainless steel door. My handle broke. The stainless steel door was fine, but the handle broke. And I could not buy just a single handle for the Weber Smoky Mountain. I had to buy the entire door. So I ordered another stainless steel door from Cajun Bandit. Found out when I got it in, it didn't come with a handle. I think the first one did, but it, this second one did not. And they didn't sell the handle. So I had to go back to Amazon and buy the original door from Weber Smoky Mountain. Just for the handle. Crazy, right? They won't sell the handle. Weber, I contact the Weber. They will not sell me just the handle by itself. So just a heads up, if you get the stainless steel door, make sure you've got a good handle to go along with it. If you don't, order a new door from, uh, from Amazon or some other outlet store where you can get the, the door and the handle and use that handle on your stainless steel door from Cajun Bandit. Again, check the links out below, folks. Um, what else was I going to show you? Oh, the chimes. I have some questions about these chimes that everybody hears in the background. Karen and I love chimes. If you don't like them, I'm sorry. You're going to continue to hear them unless it's super windy and causing problems for the sound on my camera. If it's just a light breeze, you're going to see them and hear them in the background. But let me show you who manufactured them and why these sound so great. All right, so that's where we were. It's my Weber Smoky Mountain with the new door and the River Country thermometer. Somebody asked me about my cover from my, web, from my uh, Yoder smoker. There it is. It's fully loaded Yoder Wichita. Love that. That's a great smoker, man. Love that. Competition grade, baby. Absolutely gorgeous. There's my Kamado Joe. And, of course, there's my wood and everything for the uh, smoker, the, uh, the big Yoder. Propane tanks down there for my burner that's on the Yoder. Up here, those are my chimes. Let's get a close up. If you look at the uh, base of it here, it will actually show you. So I can get the light right on it. There you go. They have many different uh, uh, different uh, tuned sounds. These are tuned. These are actually tuned to C major ninth, and it's made by Grace Note Chimes. You can find them at GraceNotes.com. And this particular chime is called Summer Daydream. The sound of it is Summer Daydream. Karen, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Let me, let me ring it a little bit for you. There you go. I also had some questions about my, uh, my pool fountain. Let me bring you over here. You got that fountain over there. My pool fountain, folks. I made that. It's just a, it's just a little improvisation I did here. Regular PVC. I punched holes like every couple of inches or so for the water to come out. Um, I made it two tier so it wouldn't be too heavy. Um, and also I connected it to one of the outlets that would normally return water into the pool there. 
But we love the sound of waterfalls. In fact, we like to do a lot of waterfall chase, chasing when we go out on vacation and stuff. So there you go. All right, let me get the camera back on the tripod and we'll tell you bye. All right, we're at the far end of my pool now. So yes, I, this is something that y'all don't usually see. I'm usually back towards the, uh, you know, where all my cookers are over here, under my pergola. So uh, this is a different end of my pool. And uh, again, over here, you see I've got a hot tub and all that. But man, it's bloody hot out here. I'm fixing to jump in this pool. I just want to thank everybody for watching this video. I appreciate y'all sticking around. Hopefully it's not too long. I'll try to edit it down a little bit. But uh, real simple mods for you the, for the Weber Smoky Mountain. Hope y'all go check it out. And remember, description box. Y'all check the description box for links. Uh, I'll put some Amazon affiliate links down there as well. So if you're interested in the Weber Smoky Mountain, I would appreciate it if you'd use my links to get to Amazon. Once you're there, you just keep that session open. You can buy whatever the heck you want. It doesn't matter. I get credit for it. Won't cost you a dime more, but it will help me. Provides me with all kind of uh, camera equipment, lighting, sound, uh, food, new cookers. So I appreciate any help. And uh, folks, again, thanks for watching. If y'all enjoyed this, y'all please give me a thumbs up. Hope y'all share the video. Nothing spreads like wildfire more than word of mouth. So please share the video if you liked it. And by all means, tell everybody that you know that T-Roy cooks responsibly. We'll see y'all next time, everybody. Cheers.